One of the more impressive things I have seen in terms of a team's extremely quick rise from a bottom feeder in the league to heading to the NBA Finals in just a matter of two seasons. That is so incredibly rare to do in the NBA. Hell, even the Brooklyn Nets, who formed a super team, couldn't go from being a fringe playoff team to heading to the NBA Finals, let alone one of the worst teams in the league, to a title contender. In fact, the only teams in modern NBA history to have gone from being one of the worst teams in the league to the finals the following season was the Boston Celtics in 2008 after they formed the big three in Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce who ultimately ended up winning the title that year and then finally the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2015 after LeBron James had returned to Cleveland and the Cavs also traded for Kevin Love. Now the Phoenix Suns, they were a bad team and I mean a very bad team for a long time. This year with them going to the playoffs was the first time that they had been to the postseason since 2010 and just two Two seasons ago, they finished with the worst record in the league, finishing the season with just 19 wins. And it wasn't like that was just a fluke season where they had some injuries and just a bad year. The year before that, they won 21 games. Prior to that, 24. And prior to that, 23 wins. The Phoenix Suns were the bottom feeders of the NBA. However, since that 19 win season just two years ago, the Suns, although had a slow start in last year's uh, season in their bubble, they were quickly able to pick it up enough to just score week into getting invited to the bubble as the last team to make the cut and the Suns despite playing so well in the bubble in Orlando going undefeated in the remaining regular season games they did fall just short of advancing to the playoffs and of course they picked right up off of that momentum this year with the help of a few acquisitions which I'll get into they finished with the second best record in the west and are now set to play in their first NBA finals game tonight since 1990 three which of course is Bulls fans we all know the Suns fell that year in the finals to the Bulls when they completed their first three-peat. Now, I've seen some comments on my videos all throughout these playoffs, some general comments, some hot takes of people saying the Bulls need to be the Phoenix Suns for this upcoming season. So in this video, I want to talk about how the Bulls can possibly replicate what the Suns did that made them one of the worst teams in the league to going all the way to the finals in such a short period of time. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. So how can the Bulls replicate what the Suns did for next season? Well, they got Chris Paul. There you go. End of the video. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But obviously, the Suns landing Chris Paul in that trade with the Thunder was a huge, huge part of their success this season. He was exactly the kind of veteran leader the young Suns team needed to really take them to that next level. Granted, I don't know anyone uh, expected them to really just all of a sudden take it to the next level and going to the NBA Finals, and who knows, maybe even they might win a championship, but for a team that had a lot of young talent and potential, which they showed in the bubble, getting a future Hall of Famer, one of the best point guards of all time in Chris Paul, leading that team is exactly what they needed. However, there is more to it than just that. And I think for the Bulls, what we have to take a step back and realize is the Bulls are not just going to be able to replicate what the Suns did overnight. As I mentioned before, what the Suns did was incredibly rare in the span of just two seasons. And while I'm not saying that it's impossible, because I do think that the Bulls have the building blocks to get there, I think we also need to manage expectations and understand that the Bulls are not just going to go to the finals next NBA season. But rather than just taking that negative view and shoot down all the people who have been making these types of comments, let's talk about how the Bulls could potentially replicate what the Suns have done. Taking a look at their roster changes and how the Bulls could follow suit to position themselves up for success in the near future. So a couple of important things happened for the Suns that accelerated their success outside of Chris Paul. One was landing the number one pick, which they used to select DeAndre Ayton, which granted they could have gotten Doncic or Trey Young with that pick, but Ayton has shown to be a very solid big man in the league in his short career and has been a big piece to their success this season. The other factor was that they also got a new coach starting last season in Monty Williams and of course, the rise of Devin Booker, who looked great ever since entering the league in his rookie season, but has really, really started taking off these last couple of years, being a walking bucket and incredibly efficient on offense. And that rise was even more apparent this season with the help of an excellent facilitator and floor general in Chris Paul. Now, I'll get into the Bulls in a minute since I know most of this video so far has just really been talking about the Suns. But when looking at the Suns roster from last year to this year, they got rid of Kelly Oubre Jr. and his bad contract. Uh, he was also included in that Chris Paul 
default trade. They let Aaron Baines go. They let Tyler Johnson go in his really, really bad contract. And then they also moved on from Ricky Rubio, who was on a bit of an inflated contract as well. They, then they added Jay Crowder. They added Etuan Moore and Chris Paul. That's it. I mean, you're talking about not really anything revolutionary here, like the Nets getting James Harden and Blake Griffin added to an already stacked team in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Really, the biggest move here was Chris Paul. Now, another noteworthy point is that last season, the Suns fared pretty well on offense, despite not really being a good team in the league. But where they lacked was defense. You fast forward to this year and they finished seventh in the league in terms of opponents points per game and ninth in the league in defensive rating. Now, the reason I bring this all up is really to highlight the importance of bringing in a star point guard on a team that is already built with the offensive firepower for which the Bulls have in Levine and Vucevic and potentially Markinen if the Bulls hang on to him. A veteran point guard, one with a great deal of experience, had the defensive prowess and intensity needed, particularly perimeter defense but also possesses a strong offensive game, not only in their ability to score and shoot from deep, but also finding guys and putting others in a position to score with great court vision. The ability to score or assisting in scoring on the majority of possessions in a game. And that's what Chris Paul does for the Phoenix Suns team. The Suns had an up-and-coming star, shooting guard in Devin Booker, and an up-and-coming big man in DeAndre Ayton. The talent was there. The potential was there. The offense, for the most part, was there. But what they were missing was a true point guard who knew how to utilize them effectively on offense while also being a mentor for their development. Ricky Rubio, although yes, a solid defender and a great playmaker with his court vision, but nowhere near to the level of Chris Paul in that regard. And of course, Rubio was never, really has never been a strong scorer or shooter, which is something Chris Paul does have in addition to the other areas of his game he also does very well. Now, I'm not saying Booker or Ayton are basically the same as Levine and Vucevic, and they're just missing that final piece of a great point guard to maximize their offensive firepower, because really you could argue that Booker is slightly better than Levine, although they're pretty close in terms of being on par with each other. I would say the only thing that Booker is uh, better at is he's a bit more clutch than Levine is, which I know some Bulls fans are not going to like me saying that, but Levine's decision-making late in game is still a big part of his game that he needs to be working on. But they're both incredibly gifted scorers. Levine is actually more efficient than Booker on offense and in my opinion is more athletic and has a greater ability of getting to the hoop than Booker does. And then of course Vucevic unlike Ayton is not a young and up-and-coming player. Vucevic is clearly a more established player and all-star and is a much more impactful player on offense with his ability to score particularly shooting from outside. Ayton I do think one day will become an all-star not necessarily a superstar but he's nowhere near on Vucevic's level yet in terms of how good he is. He could get there but just not yet. So what does this mean for the Bulls in terms of replicating what the Suns have been able to do from last season to this current one. You know, they have two all-stars who are elite scorers in Levine and Vucevic. When the team was fully healthy after Levine returned from the health and safety protocol, the Bulls did show some promise in terms of their pace and offensive flow, although nothing like what we saw from the Suns going undefeated in the bubble. But the progress looked promising nonetheless. The Bulls do have key rotational players if they are able to hold on to Thaddeus Young and Daniel Tice, who are good defenders and still young talents with potential in Patrick Williams and Kobe White, which the Suns also have in Mikkel Bridges and Cameron Johnson. So there are a lot of similarities between the Bulls of this season and the Suns of last season, and by adding one piece to elevate their game even further on offense, but also adding an impactful player on the other end of the floor, and of course being that veteran leader and mentor for the guys both on and off the court, is what put the Suns over the hump and fast-tracked them to being one of the best teams in the league that we see today. So for the Bulls, it's a matter of getting that point guard who possesses the skills necessary to be that floor general, that high IQ player, that facilitator, that veteran voice, and a strong defender. And I'm sure most of you are going to be like, duh, dude, that's been obvious for a while now. But I think what people may not have seen before are the similarities between the Suns and what they had and what the Bulls currently have and how impactful it can be in bringing in just that one missing piece. And yes, I also think it should be worth noting that this Suns team obviously plays incredibly well together. Every player knows their role and their overall fit with that team is perfect. And I think moving on from Oubre and Tyler Johnson helped in that regard because these guys more often than not produce a lot of empty stats and take away opportunities from other players. So I don't want to just chalk it up to Chris Paul is the sole reason the Suns took such a massive leap. There was much more to it than just that. But as far as the Bulls point guard options to take them to the next level, 
The challenge is, are the Bulls going to be able to bring in that missing piece? Because Chris Paul is not going to be an option. He's most likely going to be staying with the Suns, or he's going to want to make too much money that the Bulls really can't afford. The other guys like Mike Conley, who I don't think fits the Bulls all that well, as he's likely going to command too much money given you know he was just selected to his first All-Star game, led the Utah Jazz to one of the best records in the league. And at his age and the fact that he's a bit injury prone, I would be cautious if I were the Bulls. Or they could go with a guy like Kyle Lowry. This is actually been the option I have been a biggest fan of as long as the Bulls don't have to pay him too much if we were to agree to a two-in-one deal with the final year being a team option on a friendlier per year rate to give the Bulls more cap flexibility. Obviously, guys like Dinwiddie, Dennis Schroeder, uh, Alonzo Ball, or even trading for someone like Ben Simmons are somewhat options as well, but none of which possess all of the skills, experience, and expertise that a guy like Chris Paul would be needed to be that missing piece to utilize Levine and Vucevic effectively on offense while also providing strong defense. Again, something the Suns needed and the Bulls currently need. So in short, I think it's unlikely the Bulls would actually be able to replicate what the Suns have done because first of all, as I mentioned before, it is very hard to do. But second, I don't think the options of bringing in that type of veteran point guard will be feasible for the Bulls given their cap space and also the risk of taking on a player later on in their career at a high contract. But of course, our tourist likes to keep us on our toes and we never really know what kind of move he's going to make based on the transactions he's made so far in his short tenure. So who knows? I want to know what you guys think though what do you think the bulls would need to do to replicate or at least come close to it what the suns have been able to do going from being one of the worst teams in the league to now title contenders let me know in the comments and guys as always be sure to subscribe as i post daily bulls content thanks again for tuning in guys and i will catch you in the next one